Maillard reaction is an important reaction which is responsible for color and flavor in foods. There are different pathways in these reactions and Strecker degradation is one of these pathways where amino acid is decarboxylated and deaminated to form an aldehyde which is called as Strecker aldehyde. Adolf Strecker in 1862 observed the formation of acetaldehyde and isovaleraldehyde in reactions of alloxan with alanine and leucine respectively. The term Strecker degradation was originally proposed for reactions induced by carbonyl compounds, but nowadays it refers to many other types of oxidative deamination. Transamination involved in the reaction yields aldehydes, amino ketones, and carbon dioxide. The Strecker aldehyde and amino ketones formed are responsible for strong odors. Let us have a detailed look at the mechanism. Okay, now let's get into the part two, the basic mechanism of the Strecker degradation. At the whole process of a Maillard reaction, there are about nine steps to form different cooked aroma that improves their flavors. In this case, one of the main reaction in this picture, which refers to the R7, 8, and 9, is the Strecker degradation. Based on the evidence to date, it probably takes place by the mechanism shown below, like that. Usually, it is the reaction between the free amino acid and their capital components that are derived from the Maillard reaction pathway and produced an aldehyde and amino ketone. Therefore, our understanding was based on observed products like carbon dioxide, aldehyde, and so on. Often, carbon hydrate dehydration products and their fragmentation products provide the alpha their carbon reactant. One advantage of the using reactive carbon components that is that it may be possible to produce cooked aroma even at relatively low temperature. During the reaction, the amino acid undergoes decarbonization and the aminoacidase and transfer into the imine or stretched base. This reaction is compound with the carbon oxide double bond is replaced by the carbon nitrogen double bond. Mechanically, the formation of the it is involves two steps. After that, a strictly related aldehyde, termed striker aldehyde, contains one less carbon atom than the original acid is formed, which contributes to the formation of the cook aroma. To sum up, the striker degradation plays several roles in the formation of the flavor components in processed food. You can see from the picture like that. We have gone through mechanism of striker degradation, and now we wonder when the striker degradation occurs. Striker degradation occurs when there is presence of high free amino acids in food, or it can happen under more extreme conditions such as higher temperature or under pressure. There are some conditions that could form compounds other than striker aldehyde and amino ketone. Let's look at examples below. When there is presence of oxygen, the intermediate product form of the hydration and decarboxylation steps are not able to form sugar aldehyde and amino ketone. Instead, the intermediate product will undergo oxidation to form alpha dicarbonyl and followed by intramolecular redox reaction and hydrolysis to produce sugar acid and amino ketone. Examples of sugar acids are acetic acid that comes from alanine or 2,3-beta-butanoic acid that comes from leucine or isoleucine. Another condition would be when the food system has low water activity, the intermediate product prior to the release of sugar aldehyde and amino ketone cannot be produced. The process eventually forms 4-oxazolin, which is also in equilibrium to 3-oxazolin. However, sugar aldehyde can be released from oxazolin upon addition of water. The formation of oxazolins via sugar degradation can be found in cooked meat and roasted peanut. 
Both sugar degradation products, aminoketone and sugar aldehyde, can further undergo an array of reactions that lead to formation of important aroma compounds. Now, let's look at the first sugar degradation product, aminoketone, on contribution to the food aroma. Aminoketones produced from sugar degradation they can further react by undergo condensation and form dihydropyrazine. Subsequently, it undergoes oxidation to produce pyrazine. Pyrazine can be found in food products such as baked and roasted food. Sticker degradation plays an important role in the flavor formation of various processed foods. This reaction converts amino acids into the related aldehydes which contribute significantly to the aroma of final products. Some processed foods having stricter degradation include meat, milk, cheese, cocoa, black tea, and beer. In this video, we will focus on meat, cocoa, dairy, and beverage products. Draw meat contains precursors for the formation of aromatic molecules such as sugars, amino acids, ascorbic acids, and thiamine. Via cooking, many reactions including stricter degradation is occurs to form aromatic compounds. In stricter degradation, different amino acids will produce different products. Common amino acids are alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, and cysteine, which forms respective products include acetaldehyde, 2-methylpropanan, 3-methylbutanan, 2-methylbutanan, phenylacetaldehyde, methionine and acetaldehyde, mercaptoacetaldehyde with different aromas. Methionines and cysteine are two most important amino acids in the formation of meat aroma. Methionines produce methionine with the aroma of baked potato. Dubropenan and methantione are formed from the methionines which are on reactive intermediates participating into further reactions to form various final aromatic products. Cysteine produces a number of highly reactive intermediates with flavors generating potential such as ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, acetaldehyde, and mercaptoacetaldehyde. Flavors of cocoa products are affected by different factors such as genetics and growing conditions. Processing stages including fermentation, drying, and roasting. Cocoa is short of strict degradation with the reducing sugars, amino acids, and flavonoids. Major amino acids are leucine, phenylalanine, threonine, isoleucine, in which leucine and phenylalanine are the two most important amino acids, with isovaloraldehyde and phenylacetaldehyde as its main products. Furthermore, Threonine produce acetaldehyde involving in more complex reactions. Now I will briefly talk about the contribution of striker aldehyde to the flavors of processed milk. As you can see, this table shows some striker aldehyde detected in some types of milk. Well, 2-methylbutanol formed in striker degradation of isoleucine was found in pasteurized, sterilized, ultra high temperature treated milk and milk powder. Another aldehyde, 3 methyl butanol, which was generated from leucine, was detected in pasteurized and sterilized milk. And another one, isobutanol, which was generated from valine, was found in ultra high temperature processing milk and milk powder. Well, aside from processed milk, cheese is another dairy product that contains striker aldehydes. 2 methyl butanol, 3 methyl butanol, 2 methyl propanol, acetaldehyde, phenylacetaldehyde, and methionol are common striker aldehydes that can be found in cheese varieties. Among them, the first three aldehydes can contribute to the nutty flavor in aged cheddar cheese. In Parmesan cheese, three of them combined with acetaldehyde and phenylacetaldehyde can contribute to the formation of a sharp, penetrating, and fruity flavor during the cheese ripening. In addition, 
is which is some striker already has were also detected, including two metobutano, three metobutano, two metopropano, phenylacetaldehyde, and methionol. Well, besides from the contribution to flavor of some dairy products, striker aldehydes also contribute to the aromatic spoilage in alcoholic beverage. The accumulation of methionol and phenylacetaldehyde in beer during the storage can lead to the aromatic deterioration. The striker degradation in beer can be accelerated by temperature. So the higher storage temperature will result in faster striker degradation. So that to increase the shelf life beer, the storage temperature should be controlled. On the other hand, striker out in high was also far in wide. They contribute to the wide spoilage by decreasing the freshness and induce the up order development. The, the formation of striker aldehydes in wild is affected by temperature and the level of dissolved oxygen. The striker degradation of amino acids has emerged as a seemingly endless source of flavor significant compound since its discovery almost 150 years ago. Myelide reaction is related to pleasant flavors. How about the lipid oxidation? Lipid oxidation is responsible for the rancid flavors during storage. The question is, can the striker products be formed due to other pathways as well? Today, striker and striker-like reactions encompass a much wider range of food components, including lipids, lipid oxidation products, and polyphenolics, as well as terpenoids. A study was conducted in 2004 to clarify if there is any contribution from lipid oxidation products to striker degradation of amino acid. They analyzed the reaction of 4,5 epoxy 2 alkenals with phenylalanine. The data in the study indicated that the striker type degradation of amino acids is produced by some lipid oxidation products. Further studies are conducted to see how different reactions can be coordinated to form flavor compounds. There are evidences confirming the relationship between myelad reactions and lipid oxidation reactions. The experiments on striker like pathways in lipids suggests that both reactions should be studied together to understand the mechanisms in complex food systems. Extensive research and exploration is going on in the field of amino acid carbonyl chemistry, especially with the development of advanced technologies for research. And more often, the striker-like reactions are being considered not only as source of aroma compounds, but also as contributors of visual chromophores and as chase components as we have seen before. Thank you.